السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to Al Ahsan Foundation's podcast. I have a question for you all. What is your purpose in life? What is your purpose in this life and your commitment to your life and your family? Uh, we we're hoping to explore the expectations of the purpose of life, inshallah, in today's special podcast. I have two special guests today. Uh, for our first guest, uh, joining me today is Abu Ahmed. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Tala barakatuh. How are you today? Ahlan wa sahlan. I haven't seen you for about 10 seconds. That's it. Inshallah. And uh, joining us uh, all the way from Texas, uh, Salam alaikum, brother Yusha. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm fantastic, my brother. Fantastic. How's the weather there in uh, Texas? Hot. Very hot. I hear. So hot to hear that the communities this weekend were praying Salat al Istiqaf for rain. Subhanallah. Allah make it easy, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy, inshallah. So I have I have I have a question for you both, inshallah. Um, I got approached by a uh, a family friend a few days ago who's going through uh, a few personal issues. And um the 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 talk is lately almost suicidal. Um and coming from Islam, obviously, uh suicide uh, is haram. Uh so my my question to you both is, you know, what is, you know, what is the purpose and direction in our life for these, uh, for, for these brothers or anyone that is actually going through these sort of thoughts, Muslim or non-Muslim? Obviously, we, um, you know, we, mental health, especially for men lately, is a very sensitive topic uh, that, you know, as men, we always try to brush it under the carpet. And I'm sure people have actually approached you both about this. Um, what would your thoughts and what what is your feedback like when when you hear these sort of stuff from community members and and outside community members? Bismillah. You know, I I I, I have some importance about this topic because number one, um, I, I've actually dealt with a number of suicidal people <clears throat> in my counseling sessions that that express suicidal thoughts. <clears throat> it's it's actually a staggering rate. Not only that, but not only do we not talk about men's mental health, and we're not leaving the sisters out at all. Trust yeah, me, we're going to get to the whole yeah. the whole thing. Men's mental health is a very untalked about subject in general in the world. Muslim yeah, men's right. mental health is an even more taboo topic. Um, and there is actually a rise of suicide rates amongst men in the Muslim community. We know that suicide rates amongst men are tre- are, are tremendously more high than they are women. Um, but now we're starting to see this within the Muslim community. Actually, I spoke to a brother today who said within the past three months, there have been five brothers, five brothers in the United Kingdom who have taken their own lives. Uh-huh. Muslims, Muslims who are known to be Muslim, they come to the masjid, you see them at Friday prayer. Yeah, They were yeah. going on, they were going, uh, dealing with things behind the scenes that they would not tell anyone. They didn't feel like if they did tell anyone, anyone would care. That was one of the suicide notes was left was that, this got so bad that that I, I felt like I couldn't speak to anybody. And before it was too bad, I didn't feel like anybody would even care. And I don't feel like anybody's going to care that I'm not here anymore. Yeah. So the brother took his own life. And I've actually spoken to three oh. sisters over the past uh, year who have lost their, their either their spouse, their brother, or their father to suicide. So this is something that we really need to discuss. And I... And I and I believe it goes back to what you were talking about, Ahmed Danun, is not understanding purpose and not understanding the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it works in our life and test, et cetera, so on and so forth. But it is something that needs to be discussed. Yeah, it is it's a taboo topic. Men's mental health is a taboo topic. And suicide amongst men in the Muslim community is something that we're just sweeping under the rug. Would you say it's more like... A- you know, their own personal fulfillment that they see that it's not reached. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this? Look, uh, um, I saw a clip the other day on uh, on uh, Facebook and subhanAllah, it wasn't about Muslims. So the, the person that was speaking was asking a question saying, you know, um, if you have a problem. And I think it was a lady that was uh, actually asking the question. So she was asked, posing the question, when you're going through depression or you have an issue, who can you turn to? She had maybe... 10 or 15 men, I can't remember the exact amount of men, but it went for, it went for a while. Each and, in, mm-hmm. each and every single person or male said, I go to no one. They said, there's no one there for them, nor can I go to anyone to open up to. I just have to deal with this. And this is another thing, you just have to suck it up, as they say. You know what I mean? Just yeah. deal with it. You're a male, you have to deal with it. 
So whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, whether it's whatever it may be, you just have to deal with it. You know, um, uh, if a man does open up, a lot of people say, oh, look, this guy, he's a wimp. You know, yeah. uh, he can't handle himself. He's not a man. He's not this. So there's so much stress on men dealing with these emotions and having to deal with them by themselves, unfortunately. You know, you know what's interesting on, on that point? Like this day and age, I don't know if you, you have that over there in, in, uh, in USA. You ask a man or a woman, or whoever it is, how are you today? What the general consensus response is nowadays, can't complain, no one will listen. True. And True. Yeah. whenever they say that, like we've, ac- we've actually turned it almost into mockery where, you know, you, you snigger about it and you keep going with the conversation that you have. But deep down, when, when someone actually says that, they could be actually going through some sort of traumatic experience or, or something's actually happening in their life that they can't complain to anybody because no one will listen to them. That's true. Brother Yusha, as well, what we oh. have here in Australia, one day a year, we've actually got a Are You OK Day. So this is where you turn around and say to the people that you're su- supposedly close to, Are You OK? Just to open up a conversation, yeah. even though you may but be do seeing... We mean it? Yeah. That, that's the thing, because if you're actually around the person, let's just say, you know, you work with an individual. You know, how can you turn around and say, oh, once a year, are you okay? Well, you're dealing with him every day, you know, five days a week mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. So, again, I yeah, think... Yeah, we uh, set off one side a day to it. I saw that same clip that you're talking about, Abu Ahmad, yeah. has been going around for a couple of years now. Yeah. You know, where these men are just like, I have nobody. I have yeah. no one to go to. But then I've been, I, I saw something else because I, I, because of the, the fact that I deal with counseling and mental health, I watch a lot of these mental health podcasts and books, etc., there was one that was so, it was profound to me. It was that, you know, women say they want men to open up to them, right? <clears throat> that, you know, they, they say that now that mental health become a bigger thing. They were like, but in reality, you don't want that man to open up to you because what happens when he opens up to you? What, what, what Ahmed the, uses the it was saying, yeah. the moment he opens up to you and let's just say he breaks and he starts crying and he starts, you know, immediately you start looking at him lower and right. lower and lower and lower clip. until you don't respect that, yeah. him anymore. Yeah. So you say you want him to open up. We say that we want men to open up, but when they do open up, we see it as a sign of weakness. True. True. And that is the it's problem. Whereas yeah. opening up, if anybody been through mental health and I have had my own, I was very open about it in my, in my podcast and stuff like that. Like I had my own mental health struggles from my childhood, etc. Opening up is the most powerful and strongest thing that a man can do. Actually going, we don't do this, and especially for us older generation men, which I think all three of us are from that generation, except Mr. Danny's the baby over there. Um, we were not taught to open up. So opening up that can of worms and talking about our problems, talking about the things that, that, that bother us is actually a very powerful thing. But if we receive on the other end of that negativity or, or bad response, we will never do it again. We'll sure. never do it again. And then the men will just close up and he won't open up ever again, which is a big, big problem. And that's where the thoughts of suicide will come in because he, can't, he feels that he can't trust anyone. I trusted you. I opened up to you. Now that you're, you're looking down at me or using this against me, yeah. how am I supposed to open up anymore? Especially if they, um, if they try to open up to someone who's very close to them, yeah. the reaction that they were expecting or the support that they were expecting <laughs> doesn't come to what their expectations were. Yeah. They're, they're never going to open up again. Like yeah. they're not, they're no, not they're going to trust somebody that's outside his circle or her yeah. circle yeah. for for that. Time. And it is unfortunate. We, we we had some people that we knew in the past. Um, you know, uh, hit by trains. Uh, we actually washed one of them. Um, prior to that, the yeah, the brother cool. that we used to see, there was not. We didn't think there was a problem with him. He was just around us. He was happy. You know. Um, you know, would speak all this sort of stuff. Uh, the following week, we're we're washing. You know what I mean? Yeah, he He's, told me that, yeah, that he yeah, threw himself yeah. in front of a train. Yeah, well, yeah, subhanAllah. I have two brothers who came to me suicidal and the reason why they went to the point of suicide and were thinking about it was because they were having mental health struggles. They opened up to their wives about it. Their wives filed divorce from them because of it oh. and then used that in court to take their children from them. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a man decides to open up? about his mental health struggles and what he's going on and his wife's like what's wrong with you why are you so snappy why are you short-tempered why why are you closed off and recluse and you don't talk to nobody you don't come home too late and he opens up about the fact that he's struggling mentally maybe he's going through anxiety depression you know things are going on financially and he doesn't want to share that burden with his wife then he opens up to her about these things she uses it as a reason to leave him and then goes to the court and says he's mentally unstable he doesn't deserve to see his kids subhanallah what 
you know, what impact would that also have yeah, to his, his psyche? Look, again, we don't want to say us and them. Any, yeah. we're, we're not here to, to, you know, blame the women or blame the men or all these sort of things. We, we know it's an issue. It is an issue. Um, you know, but the, again, going back to the point of you know, understanding the, the, the question that you had, what is your purpose? Uh, yeah. In life, in terms of that, I think I think people have to come back in terms of okay, why did Allah put us on this earth? Yeah, wa ma kalak al jinn wal ins illa li yabudun. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala didn't create the man or the jinn, yeah, except for us to worship Him. And this is a focus point of us. Okay, we know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He created us to worship Him. We know there's tests and trials. We know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He is the one that went through the most most tremendous trials more than anyone. Yeah, and through His sirah you can see this, and there's many many examples that we can give of that. Subhanallah. Any one being uh, when they were digging um, the, the the battle of the trench when they were digging, and uh, you know the, they um, they came to a big boulder and they came to the Prophet and said, "Ya Rasulullah, uh, there's a boulder here. We can't uh, remove it and all this sort of stuff." They came, he hit it, it broke into pieces. Then they noticed that the Prophet had a had a rock on his stomach, uh, on his stomach where he was starving. You know what I mean? And this is the thing. Allah mm-hmm. gave him that 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 um, the, that power, but then again, he was suffering. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for us all to understand, we have to first and foremost turn to whom? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's our saviour. He's the one that created us. He's the one that can make things go away. So the solution here, our purpose is to worship Allah, is to put our trust in Allah, is to pray to Allah. Through these tests, what do we do? We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the, the our mentor who's the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What did he do? How did he do things? Many times you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa standing in prayer at night. He's in battle during the day and he's standing all night. Crying, standing in prayer, being uh, steadfast and firm, and he was going through much, uh, so much. His uh, family, they rejected him, they kicked him out of Mecca, he had to lose everything uh, of his wealth, and all the Sahaba went through the same thing. But again, going yeah. back to the point, they had one another, and I think that's the key, you should, they had one another to speak to. Before one another, they had who? Oh, yeah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they had true trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he would listen. They also had the understanding, the concept that life was not all cotton candy and rainbows. True, true. You know, I mean, Allah, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, you know, in Surah Al-Ankabu, do you think that you're going to say you're not, you're going to believe and we're not going to test you? Like life is not supposed to be, especially for the believer, it's not supposed to be an easy road. And I've, I've said this so many times and I've told brothers, like, if you say you're a believer and you're never being tested, Allah's not putting you through difficulty. You don't have hardships. You don't have any, you should be worried. You should be worried. If you say you're a believer and your life is just super easy all the time, Check I would amen. be worried. Check I'd be concerned. Amen. 100%. Check I, would be co- I would be concerned. Yeah. Because the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah tests those whom he loves. So if, if I wasn't getting tested, I'd be wondering if Allah loved me. Yeah. But we do need a support system. That's a problem. I could go very deep down the rabbit hole with this. I'm not going to. Um, but part of it is, if you, even if you look at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was a, it was a, 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 not a, and I'm not saying tribal system in the terms of Asabiyya, but it was a tribal system in the terms of there was a community. It was a community. And that's the way it used to be for a very long time. Yeah. Like people lived in communal groups. And then what happened after World War II, especially in the West, they started sectioning off the suburbs and, you know, the, the nuclear family and people moving out on their own, away from their in-laws, away from their extended family. And then we cut off that whole we cut off that, you know what I mean? We cut off that connection to the to the rest of our, our tribe. And we see that as Muslims now. Like everybody, you could have a neighborhood that's full of Muslims and nobody knows no, what's no, going on in anybody right. else's life. That's right. You have no idea. Yeah, yeah. And and that's a problem that we don't have that sense of community anymore. That's true. You know what I mean? We, we don't have it. You we're, know, we're all living our own lives. Yeah, no, 100%. You know what? It's, it's funny you should actually bring that up because like let's use the pandemic and social media and people becoming introverts. Um, as a result of you know uh, the pandemic and them of them getting used to isolating themselves, do you think that's also had some sort of impact, which which has made them move away from being social? I had COVID three different times, and since then I've had a plethora of different health issues. All of a sudden that that that, that have popped. They were always there, but now they're so much more pronounced. You know, what I mean, these heart issues I have, these other things, they just all of a sudden just just like boom. But what Danny was talking about, one thing that I do know that happened during the pandemic that was a tragedy is is uh so much reliance on social media yeah you know social media was already a big issue it was already a problem with how people perceive themselves um people looking at other people's lives not that weren't realistic anyway because they have the pandemic the pandemic pushed everybody towards social media everybody was on socials all day long and they got used to doing that which gave us a very false sense of reality 
You know, I mean, you go on social media and you see all these other people apparently living these amazing life and you go on social media everybody's living an amazing life yeah. and here you are like oh my god my life is you know life is terrible <laughs> and 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 one thing that i have learned through psychotherapy is that when you're ungrateful when you're ungrateful your mental health will be tragically um affected by it and this is part of the the verse where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in shakartum that if you're grateful to me i'll give you more but what does the end of that verse say if you are ungrateful know that my punishment is severe Ingratitude begets Allah's punishment in your life. And that's what we've done now. We look at social media. We see these people who look like they're living the most largest lives. They're flying everywhere. They're staying in Turks and Caicos. They're living in these fancy hotel rooms and look like they're driving, you know, Ferraris every the weekend. A lot of times just rentals. They're living a facade life. And then we're trying to live up to that. Yeah. It's unrealistic standards. Yeah. Get off the social media. Get off your phone. The society, especially kids growing up from a tender age, there's a phone. Keep them quiet. Don't let them cry. Don't let them in the us growing up, I think we mentioned this before, us growing up, yeah, we would go out, play uh, you know, from the, the, the time we wake up until uh, Maghrib time, then go, uh, you know, go back into the house yeah. and all this sort of stuff. There's a funny clip once that, that spoke about the hose, drinking from a hose. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen it. So there's a, I've seen it. a new age guy saying, you know, why would you have to go and drink from a hose if you could just went inside and drink from a cup or whatever it is, you know what I mean? But back then, there was a Because we didn't want to go inside. Exactly. You had to stay inside if you went inside. You get locked back in. Yeah, like right. we had to turn on the hose, and right? And it was a hot water. Let the hot water go out. Get, get rid of the hot water. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know what? Yeah, I, and I saw, even during the pandemic, I saw some people like, man, I ain't worried about no COVID. I, drove, I, I, I grew up drinking from a garden hose. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But yeah. the difference was we actually interacted with people. Now sending your kids outside is a punishment. I tell my kids to go outside. They're like, what did I do? <laughs> what do you mean? What did you what did you do? <laughs> For us, it was it was a punishment. Like we would and I'm and, and I'm saying this in a very nonchalant way, but like we would we would avoid going inside. We would use the yeah. bathroom in the woods if we had to, because we knew that if we went back inside, That's it. our yeah, parents might be like, Oh, by up. the way, stay inside. You're already back in, so stay in. No, yeah. no, no, no. We wouldn't we'll do come some in. Chores we or things. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were forced. Now our kids to to, to tell them to go out the side is like is like torture. You know, it's, it's funny when whenever we get, uh, you know, uh, people coming in and asking us what cataract is for, for eye operations and that. My response to them generally is, you know, when we were younger and we used to go outside and then by the time we go inside, we can't see because of the sunspots that we have in our eyes. Uh, that's my explanation of how it's difficult for people to see sometimes and other things. But I can't actually explain that to a younger generation because they probably haven't experienced it before. They get the sunspots from the, the, <laughs> the, the devices, from their phones and the, the, what do you call it? Like, I'm sure, like, if you tell, if you tell a teenager that know. probably doesn't actually go out as often, they probably wouldn't actually comprehend what we're referring to. Yeah. No, they're not. But one thing I tell a lot of my, my coaching, my, my counseling clients that are losing kind of this, this mental health battle is I ask them about their purpose. You know, I ask them, this is one of the core things I ask them about, like, what is what is your purpose in life? What drives you to wake up every single day? Because if you have no purpose, you have no life. Yeah. If you have, if you, if you have no purpose, you have no life. If your purpose in life is just to get up every day and see what, you know, go to work, come home, clock in, clock out, make it through the day to the weekend until you can take some, I'm like, that's not a purpose. You, you have no drive. If you have no drive, th if things go wrong in your life, you go with it if you have no purpose. But for those of us who have a bigger purpose, like Abu Ahmed, I'm sure you've been through many ups and downs in your life from talking to you. Know, I know about your life story. Ahmed Danoon, we haven't gotten that deep, but I'm sure you have. I myself have had so many ups and downs in life. But having that fine purpose, defined purpose in my life is what's allowed me to be able to overcome each and every one of those hurdles. And I've learned that through, you know, looking at these big people in business. For instance, you take like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, for instance, Steve Jobs, what 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 did he go through to become the, the 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 person who would change technology as we know it today? You know, he was fired from his own company. He yeah. was fired from his own company, yeah. and, and didn't didn't have anything. Started another company, ended up buying it by you know getting back into Apple, then creating the iPhone, which changed the world. And all of it was because he understood his purpose was that he wanted to make technology. Um, he wanted to give people the technology that they needed even before they knew they needed it. And that was his purpose. And so therefore, whatever he would go through, he would just keep going through it because he knew his end purpose. We as Muslims got to learn that. Yes. So what it, what it come back down to, you know, when you when you speak to them, like speak to you know, <clears throat> any brothers or sisters that approach you, um, and I'm sure you probably go, go through it yourself as well. Would you like 
put points like whether it's a mental note or not in terms of personal fulfillment in your life um, and what you want to achieve in order for them to actually try to you know um, you know envision or try to aim towards that sort of vision like because you're saying everyone's almost like in routine work home work home you know, there's no actual, full, like they probably feel that there's no fulfillment there's in no their life. There's no purpose in life, yeah. basically. Yeah. No, we're, like, we're like mice on a wheel. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It just keeps going around and around. <laughs> if you look at Islam in general, you know, we're always encouraged to do more in good, in khair. Yeah. So whatever good mm-hmm. you do, do as much as you can. <clears throat> for instance, if you pray your 12 daily uh, sunnah prayers, for instance, what, what do you get as a reward? Uh, you get a house built in Jannah. Jannah. House in Jannah. So we're always encouraged to do more. Think about it, you know, you're saying, okay, I'm living in this world, okay, it's going to be a short period of time. So Allah has put us here to worship Him. We know this world's full of tests and trials and all these sort of things. Yes, there's happiness as well involved. We're not saying that, you know, <coughs> you're living uh, your, your life just to be yeah, in, in torture and ris- yeah. m- misery yeah. and all these sort of things. No, there's happiness also, you know, through your worship, through your family, through your children, uh, through your work, from you getting certain amounts of wealth. No one's saying wealth is bad, nor is it evil. But what do you do with that wealth? That's our thing here. But also this attached from the dunya, meaning you have to remember there's a higher goal and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, cre- created us. So if the hereafter, is it forever or is it just limited time? The hereafter is forever, inshallah. So you have a goal and Allah's given us that goal. He's saying, okay, here this test life may be hard, but you have to achieve something. So you have to achieve something, right? So you, you spoke about Steve Jobs and all these sort of people. All of them put a higher level. They go, okay, I need to achieve this. Once they achieve that, believe me, they put something else to achieve as well. Yeah. They don't stop. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, they're, they're never finished. Yeah. They're never satisfied. So for for anyone who <laughs> obviously is is going through these, you know, the, these issues and that, um, you know, what what would their first, um, what would what would your recommendations be in terms of, uh, you know, trying to trying to balance their life and and coming look, back to their self care sort of thing. Look, from my my end is always getting them to open up. If they don't think there's a problem, they need to say there is a problem. They need to acknowledge there is a problem. Then you can start yeah. working on things. Because if you put, if you've built up a, uh, a wall, you're not going to get over correct uh, over the wall. Nor can you knock it down. You have to say, okay, there is a problem. Start to talk because if something's left in your heart and it's always itching at you, you're not going to get over it. You need to talk about it, get it out of your, you know, get, if you can solve it, if it's a problem you can solve, you need to solve it, yeah? If it's a lack of something, you need to achieve so you can get past it. So this is what you have to just start by opening up, going to a person who's trustworthy. This is the main thing, not somebody who's going to, you know, take use it advantage. against you or take advantage yeah, and all this. Yeah. You need to go to a trustworthy individual so they can help you and the right person. And you know, if I've got a problem uh, with obesity and you wouldn't have a clue, I can't come to you. You need to go to the right person. And again, this is one thing, as you know, um, uh, Brother Yusha, and as well, that most people go to, uh, go to um, you know, Mashaykh or Du'at and all these sort of things, and maybe they're not qualified in that field. You know, if you've got a problem with business, if this guy doesn't know nothing about They'll business... They'll need to seek professional help. 100%. So depending on the problem they're going through... Like today, yeah. subhanAllah, a lady came in, and she unfortunately had a bit of a, a problem. Um, uh, something was taken from their home and all this sort of stuff, and she unfortunately she didn't know, but she said, oh, is there anything you can do for me? And I said, what do you mean? She said, you know, isn't there something we can do? I go, you want me to use shayateen to get information? I don't do that, unfortunately. <laughs> Lack of knowledge. But she's thinking she can come to someone who's uh, religious and get this information. Yes. Not unknowingly that it's haram, you know what I mean? But this is how people, they, and that's another thing, when people get desperate, they go, unfortunately, to the, to the wrong people to, to seek advice. So, Brother Yusha, mm. what motivations um, would you recommend to to anyone who who are going through these issues that may need that sort of self care um, therapy happening um, for them to open up and 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 obviously get back on track and you know aim to achieve you know what their motivation is in their life and and their purpose in their life. There's three small points for for not being long winded because this is something I've comes up over and over and over again in counseling. Number one, I tell people you have to have a stubborn attitude. Survivors in this life, people who go through difficulties, that you, one trait I'll tell you about each and every one of them is that we're all stubborn. You know what I mean? Like we, we refuse to give up. We refuse to give up. Like I have certain goals that I want to hit in my life, certain milestones that I want to hit, whether it's in my, in my worldly life or it's in my, my hereafter life. And I'm stubborn. I don't like to, I don't like to fail. You know what I mean? I, I, I will go over whatever obstacles, climb through whatever traps, go through barbed wire fences, deep forests. I, I don't stop until I get what I want. So you have to develop a stubborn attitude, a very disciplined, stubborn attitude. And on top of that, you need to understand the race. 
the race is not a rat race in this world because it, as Abu Ahmad said, it's it's finite. You know what I mean? The only the akhirah is infinite. And Allah tells us about the race, the rat race. Illa rabbi. The only race should be for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I tell them their purpose, no matter what they want to accomplish in life, you have to remember the, the final purpose, as Allah says in the Quran when he talks about the Prophet is a good example to be followed. But then he says what? Liman kana yarjullaha wal yawm al-akhirah wa dhakurullaha kathira. Those whose hope is with Allah on the last day. That's your final purpose. Everything in your life needs to be centered around hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and the last day. And then I, this is an advice I give to everybody who's going through difficulties, stress, you know, all of these things. I tell them to make a list. This list has been monumental to me in getting through my mental struggles. I make a list. On one side of that list, at the top of it, I put things that I can change. On the other side of that list, I put things that I cannot change. And I think about the stressors in my life, the things that are bothering me, the things that keep me up at night, the things that cause me anxiety, the things that cause me uh, uh, depression, whatnot. And I ask myself, are these things I can change? If they are, I put them on that side of the list and I start making a plan on what am I going to do to start changing them. And if they are things that you cannot change, then these are the things that you have to get up in the middle of the night and pray about. These are the things you have to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll say it and I'll finish with this so that we're not too long-winded. I tell people, if you really want something, ask yourself this question. Are you willing to work hard for it during the day and pray hard for it at night? Because if you're not willing to work hard for it during the day and then get up in the middle of the night and pray hard for it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't want it as badly as you think you do. Because that night prayer is, Abu Ahmed, I'm sure you can you know, give some more info on that, but that night prayer, that qiyam al-layl for people who are struggling, is like the Prophet Sallallahu said, like it's an arrow that does not miss its target. It's an arrow that doesn't miss its target. So if you have something that's bothering you, talk to someone, as Abu Ahmed said, open up to them, but make sure you get up in the middle of the night and pour your heart out to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He will never fail you. Never. Don't forget, many people's stress is because of the dunya. For instance, people want a house, people want a nicer car. Against uh, this influence from this new technology or this new era of you know social media and all these sort of things. Sadatni, believe me, believe me. Let's just say you want a certain pair of shoes or you want a handbag because they're so expensive these days. They, once that individual gets a handbag or shoes, what happens? They're not satisfied. They want something else. Yeah, they, they want something it else. It doesn't last long. Yeah, they're It doesn't it. last long. You need, this is the thing. You need, you're never ever going to be satisfied. If you're talking about generally the, the, the dunya, you're never ever going to be satisfied. As is mentioned the, as, in one of the hadith of the Prophet in the Prophet meaning, Prophet meaning Prophet. You need, if uh, the Bani Adam had a, uh, a mountain of gold, what does he want? He wants another one. Another, another one. one. Yeah. yeah. And nothing's going to fuel the, the son of Adam uh, uh, is what? You need the throb, the, the, the dirt. They basically the want dust to, of the grief. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, the dust of the That's grief. it. That's going to seal your life. That's it. You know, and then you're going to be content. But then again, you've got some questioning in the grave. You're going to either have a, right. a pit of the whole fire there for yourself or a window of, of Jannah. And you're going to smell the reek and the, the, the fragrance of Jannah. So we just have to remember, just try to think outside the square that we're, we're living in the moment, which is this showing us and teaching us, this is how you should live your life. And you know, all the companies and, uh, you know, these mega companies that know you know, basically what, what yeah. to sell us because they're listening, they're knowing what we're typing, yeah. and they know exactly what we want. Talk about, okay, I'm going to say this, right? I'm going to say, I want to build a shed. I guarantee you now on Facebook and all this sort of stuff, all these shed advertisements are going to pop up. Yeah. Yeah. After this talk today about mental health, I'm going to start getting mental health ad pops up on my Instagram. Yeah, I definitely. promise you. But I want to ask you before we close out, Abu Ahmed, I want to ask you one question. People ask me this all the time. If I'm a believer, right? I pray five times a day. Um, I, I, I fast in the month of Ramadan. I, I give charity. Like I do everything, you know, like w nobody should con consider themselves a good Muslim. That's a sign of, 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 uh, of a disease of the heart. But if I'm doing all of these things right, why is Allah putting me through so much difficulty? Why? If I pray, I, I'm praying, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Why is Allah making my life so miserable? If that's How question, would you answer that if somebody came to that and told you that? I've had that many times in, in the past. In I, that, that's my number one question in counseling. Look, for, uh, for my side, I always remind the people that you're not better than the Prophet Sallallahu And again, we go through the sirah, and I love the sirah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because this, this fills the heart and gives you hope and understanding of why am I, why am I actually living. The Prophet Sallallahu was tested time and time and time and time again. And we're not better than him. Every, no, every prophet was tested, true or not? 
Yeah, so many things were taken away from them, so many calamities hit them. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you mentioned in the narration, yeah, that if Allah loves you, He tests you. Simple. So if you want a higher level in Jannah, it's not just going to come, Allah, because uh, you know, I'm sitting down and doing nothing. No, tests and trials need to come to you. This is the thing. This is a sign that you're a believer, a sign that you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He wants more for you in Jannah. And this is sometimes yeah. misunderstood in this time because of the mentality of the people and all the brainwashing that we're getting at the moment now. Because every, in this time, it's like, forget Allah. Everyone's becoming an atheist. There is no God. Yeah. And this is the mental state of the people. And this is why we're starting to question, if Allah, you know, if I'm praying my five daily prayers, why does Allah bless me and trial me? But this is part of the dunya. And this is part of our, our going through these stages so that we can enter this jannah. I guess, look, yep. and I, I always, I always tell them to ask themselves because you know they say, "Why me?" Right? That's what everybody says. Why me? I, I tell them change that question, and I want you to, I want you to answer me. Why not you? Why not you? If our prophets had to go through so much stuff, what is it about you that's so amazing, so amazing, so absolutely amazing that you don't deserve any test? But you know what's funny, Yusha, is that everyone is asking the question, "Why me?" So everyone is going through a test and trial. Because everyone does ask that. Don't you question yourself sometimes? Don't yeah. you question yourself? Even yourself, you, you'd question yourself of, of sometimes. You need, I'm going through this again. Oh my God. You know, you rest a bit, then you go again. You rest a bit, then you go again. So everyone is going through a personal trial, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah, man. Allah, subhanAllah, We're all going, that's, that's, that's one thing we need to remember. And that's an overall, I've seen this post on social media a lot during the pandemic as well. Treat people kindly because you never know what battles people are facing behind closed doors. Yeah. That's true. And if you That's see true. someone struggling, this is for everybody who's watching this podcast. If you see someone of your friends in your family, you know, someone you're close to, someone you deal with on a regular basis, and you see something has changed about them, changed about their demeanor, they become withdrawn, they seem more sad, they say, speak to them, speak to them, talk to them, and mean it when you talk to them. Instead of asking people, because we ask people how we are all the time, and it's, it's, it's fluff. Like, I don't really care. I don't really... I ask, yeah, but like, hey, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. What if you say, oh, man, I'm going through it and I don't, I'm going, I, whoa, 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 whoa. What did me? <laughs> I didn't ask that. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just wanted a cup of water. Problem. That's all I wanted. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. what happens. But like, but yeah. ask people how they are and genuinely mean it and be willing to listen to them. Yeah. That, that, willing to listen to them. That and I know think... that if you're struggling out there, it is not a sign that you are a horrible person. You know what I mean? That you're a bad person. Don't be afraid to ask for help. But again, again, you should especially to, brothers to find the person that actually cares is another uh, is another problem within all of society, not just yeah. within our ummah. Because who, where can you actually say how many brothers that you know sincerely care? Like for instance, if you opened up, would they ring you back up and say, "Are you okay? Do you need anything?" And persist with that. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I, I can't. I can't say that I. I, I want to lose fingers of you. Like you, 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 you can probably count them on your. You know, on one of your hands for the amount of people that that you believe that you care. I'm not saying that everyone around me, but you just you have that sort of feeling of you know, oh, okay, I I could sense this person will, but this person won't, sort of thing. And you have that sort of that sort of um, yeah, true, thought true. process. Subhanallah. And we need to become advocates for Muslim mental health services within the Muslim percent. community. Yeah. we need it. We need professionals. Imams are not trained to deal with this all the time. You know, what I mean, they're 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 just not, and I've seen it too many times over where imams have tried to deal with people with mental health, and they've made the situation worse. so much worse. Yeah, like yeah. we need to start dealing with this in an appropriate manner. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make it easy on whoever is actually going through any any calamity. So, can we life. ask you, Mr. Ahmed, what is your purpose in life, inshallah, <laughs> after all this talk? Stay tuned to next podcast. You'll, you'll know. <laughs> he's he's no, a dodger, Mr. Dan, Danny it, Danun the Dodger. That's it, mate. Dodge Viper. Um, for for anyone who is actually going through any medical, uh, sorry, any any calamity in their life or any mental health, um, obviously please seek professional help. Hundred um, percent. That's 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 a given, inshallah. Um, otherwise, um, you know. Don't but, keep it in, in other words. Yeah, don't that, keep it in. Right. Don't hold it in and think you know you can deal with it because you don't know. Shaitan, wallahi, shaitan don't, will yeah, continue, continue to the point of yeah. making you commit suicide or disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to do something. Don't leave it or in. Or you'll bleed, as the statement goes, you'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah subhanallah. If you don't heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. So heal yourselves. Yeah, wallah. I like that actually saying. It's actually good. 
سبحان الله من الله سبحانه وتعالى ما كريز يونا مو جزاك الله خير في تايم برادا يوشا مالا ووجو جزاك الله خير في تايم إن شاء الله we look forward to uh, our next podcast إن شاء الله إن شاء الله we're gonna make this a regular insta- installation for our audience so they can get to know us get to know who we are what we do and that we're more than just a charity you know what I mean like we actually have concern for people because a charity you think of people who are sustaining other people's physical lives but we also want to sustain people's too. spiritual life that's right and, uh, you know what i mean and mental life like yeah. it, the whole whole holistic approach that people we want to keep them alive we want to make sure they're sane and we want to make sure that they make it to paradise inshallah and reward you inshallah ta'ala and reward Amen. you as well for taking your time i know it's very hard for you to get here a lot of the times uh, so alhamdulillah we locked you in so the studio so one of my tests and trolls in this life is mr Danun. so you know, I, have to, <laughs> I have to make, I think I have to get up in the third, last third of the night sometimes, uh, you know, just to Alhamdulillah. make du'a. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. As long as you make du'a for me, that's the <laughs> main thing, inshallah. Jazakum khair for your time, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all, and until next time, Jazakum khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.